pending. And it has started. I probably say that at the beginning. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you all for coming to the December 14th meeting of the Clean Water Board. Uh, we're scheduled to go for an hour and a half today. I'm going to uh, take a quick run through the agenda and then we will um, deal with the meeting minutes from the October 13th and November 4th meetings. Um, after that, we're going to uh, Emily Bird will take over for a summary of the public comment on our draft budget. We'll move into a discussion for 15 minutes about so that'll take about half an hour, then we'll do about 15 minutes on uh, discussing possible changes. And then a half an hour is open for available for public comment. And then wrapping up the day, we will um, have a vote to adopt the uh, budget recommendation to Governor Scott and a short section for other business before we adjourn. Um, any members of the board have any questions before I move into the meeting minutes? All right. Um, now, as far as procedure for reviewing these minutes, I'm trying to remember from observing the board before, did we pull the minutes up on the screen, Emily, or I know that the prior uh, versions have been distributed. Is that correct? That is correct, and I'm about to share them. Apologies for the delay. I have the October 13th materials displaying now, and the November 4th public hearing minutes are in the package of public comment. Okay. Uh, let's so for October 13th. Um, any members of the board have uh, and I can see the tiles if anyone raises their hands. So um, does anyone have uh, corrections or edits that they would propose to the October 13th minutes? All right. Um, so now I guess moving on to a motion to adopt the October 13th minutes. So moved. Second. A second from Secretary Moore. All right. All right, motion, I guess, uh, sorry, my, I'm a little rusty. Uh, motion accepted at that point. <laughs> Thanks, that was a bit too much of a question. Um, <laughs> All right, now let's move on to the November 4th. Is that, we have a copy of those available? You said that that was in the public comment package? Yes, yes. contained in the package of public comment. Should we vote to approve the October before we move to November? Um, sorry, I, um, uh, yes, thank you. All right. Um, So procedurally, Emily, can you help me out here? Um, sure. There was a, a motion to approve, I believe, was made by Secretary Flynn and seconded by yes. Secretary Moore. And and then I um, I suppose it would be if there is any discussion. Um, and if there's no discussion, then uh, all in favor, or roll call to see if all are in favor. And then the motion would pass, I believe. Okay. All right, is there any discussion then on the October 13th minutes? All right, so all in favor? Aye. Yeah, aye. 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 All opposed? You say nay. All right, appears all, all are in favor to adopt the October 13th, to approve the October 13th minutes. All right. Um, now for the November fourth minutes. Um, before I ask for a motion, is there 
Uh, are there any edits or comments members of the board would like to make on the November 4th minutes? All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the November 4th minutes? Aye. A second, second, please. All right. Motion accepted. Um, is there any discussion? All right. All in favor. All in favor of accepting the November fourth minutes. Uh, please say aye. 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 All right. All opposed. All right. The November fourth minutes are approved. Thank you for bearing with me. I apologize for the rust. It'll shake off. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> all right. So with that done. Um, I'd like to hand it over to Emily to move into the summary of the public comment. Thank you. Just modifying my screen share here for a moment. Uh, can you see the PowerPoint slides? OK. Yes. Great. I don't know how you're actually doing that. You... <laughs> no, um, no, no, I do not. No, no, no. Okay. Um, well, thank you everyone. I put together a few slides to summarize the results of our state fiscal year 2023 clean water budget public comment period. Um, so I'm going to just run through some of the process steps to orient you to where we're at today and then also summarize the high level themes that we synthesized public comment into and an overview of how we addressed or resp responded to comments in the revised budget proposal. Um, so as far as the budget process goes, as many of you know, uh, the clean water budget contains funds from the clean water fund, the capital bill, and this year through state fiscal year 2024, American Rescue Plan Act dollars or ARPA dollars. And each year we put the budget, the draft budget together and hold a clean water board meeting uh, for the board to review the draft budget and approve it before it gets posted for public comments. So that occurred October 13th. After the budget was approved for public comment posting, we posted it for a 30 day public comment period from October 19th through November 19th. Um, and then we held a public hearing as well, which are included in the November 4th minutes. Uh, public comment was shared during that. And we also uh, collected public comment through an online questionnaire asking folks to weigh in on how the funds were allocated across the budget and if they had any other recommendations. Um, and then today we have completed the public comment period for 30 days. Agency staff have reviewed the public comment and synthesized it into a summary and have pre presented some recommendations uh, for how to address public comment in the revised budget recommendation. So today on November 4th or December 14th, the Clean Water Board will be reviewing the revised budget proposal and approving it for the final budget recommendation that will be made to the administration. Um, and to the legislature. And then once the budget gets baked into the administration's budget proposal and presented to the legislature in January, then it will go through the legislative budget making process and may be subject to some comment or adjustments as part of that process as well. And then once it's approved by the legislature, it will be appropriated to agencies for implementation. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of context of where we're at in the process before we dive in. Here's a quick summary of the level of participation in the public comment period. So I want to thank everybody for their participation in the process, whether you attended a meeting, the public hearing, or responded to the questionnaire or submitted a public comment letter. We really appreciate your feedback and, and highly encourage it. Uh, so the November 4th public hearing was attended by 20 uh, members of the public, excluding board members and state staff. Um, and there were 13 individuals who voiced public comment during the public hearing. And the online questionnaire, we received 95 responses, which is down a little bit from prior years, but it still represents a pretty uh, decent response rate. Uh, and then we also received eight letters or e through email uh, from our partners. And uh, we have one additional letter that came in after the deadline that we've included in the December 14th meeting material. So just wanted to highlight uh, the extent of public comment that we received. And now I'm going to move into uh, our summary of the public comment and we've grouped it into themes. There are 12 themes that are summarized in the memo that has been sent around. 
um, the memo packages together all of the public comment that we received and provides a cover page that summarizes the public process and then summarizes each of the themes of public comment and how we responded to them as part of the budget revision process. So now I'm just going to, I've organized for presentation purposes of uh, the public comment themes into um, a table here. So there's 12 rows we'll be walking through in these tables. Um, and I have printed materials for folks in the room. Um, and just going to summarize each of those themes and how we responded to them. Uh, so first theme was related to clean water fund revenue. And the online questionnaire asked um, the respondents if they agreed with the level of clean water fund revenue. Uh, this is an area of, of jurisdiction for the clean water board to make recommendations on whether there is sufficient revenue in the clean water fund. So we wanted to make sure to include that in the questionnaire. Uh, so 39% of the folks who responded to the questionnaire indicated that they did not agree with the level of clean water fund revenue and instead recommended an average level of 49.5 million compared to the 25.9 million um, that's currently in the budget. However, we do not recommend an increase in revenue as of state fiscal year 2023 uh, because many of you are aware we are in a position of being able to leverage uh, significant federal investments in the coming uh, years. We have American Rescue Plan Act funds that will be working in the water infrastructure space from state fiscal year 2022 to 2024, as well as the passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. So for that reason, uh, we're not recommending an increase at this time. And we also have a technical analysis that's underway that will refine our cost estimates related to how much it will cost to meet our phosphorus reduction targets. Uh, and that once that analysis is complete and we have a better sense of those cost projections, we may have better data to inform uh, this need in the future. So that's the first budget theme, uh, public comment theme, I should say. Uh, the second public comment theme is related to how we allocated funding across the high, medium, and low slash other tiers of the budget. Uh, so by statute, the in statute, the Clean Water Fund priorities are set to articulate specific activities that are considered high priority, medium priority, and a, a low priority in the clean water budget. So we worked uh, as part of the state fiscal year 2023 process to identify existing line items that fit into each of those priority areas uh, and then incorporate new funding programs that are being established in effect state fiscal year 2023 um, and grouped them into those priority tiers and then asked the public if they agreed with how much percentage of the funding we allocated to high, medium, and low uh, priority line items. And so 48% of the respondents to our online questionnaire recommended uh, a change to how we allocated funding across that. So just about half of the respondents did not agree with how we allocated funds across those tiers. Uh, and there was, a, a on average, a request to reduce high priority by 7%, medium priority reduced by 1%, and increase low priority or other priority by 8%. At the same time, we heard from a number of commenters uh, the statutory language that signals the board to fully fund high priority line items before moving funding onto the medium priority line items and funding those before then moving funding down. So sort of a waterfall effect uh, to the, the low priority funding items. Um, and we'll get to it a little bit later, but there was also a recommendation to fully fund the enhanced water quality enhancement grant program at the statutory ceiling of $5 million. Uh, so we'll get into a little bit more detail on that in a moment. Uh, so as, but in response to both that and the requirement to fully fund high priority tier first, we've shifted in the clean water budget $2 million from the medium priority tier into the high priority tier within the clean water fund column. And we feel somewhat comfortable with this uh, because we imagine, we know that there will be significant federal funding sources that will be leveraged to support uh, medium and low priority tier items in the stormwater regulatory space, including ARPA and Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act funds. So that's the second theme. Uh, the third theme is related to clean water service provider sufficient progress determination. 
So in statute, uh, clean water service providers must be making reasonable progress toward meeting their phosphorus reduction targets uh, or determined as making sufficient progress before uh, in order to authorize funding to the municipal stormwater implementation grant program and the developed lands implementation grant program. And those two grant programs essentially fund stormwater regulations for the municipal and the private landowner audience. Um, and so there was a question of whether it was premature to be allocating funds to those activities, given that clean water service providers have not yet uh, started to make phosphorus reductions. And so we clarified here uh, that we are defining in this first year, state fiscal year 2023, uh, that sufficient progress is defined as meaningful participation, active participation in clean water service provider startup activities, which are ongoing. So that's the third theme. And then the fourth theme is related to project identification, prioritization, and development of, excuse me, funds. Uh, <laughs> talking a lot. Um, and there were comments that uh, expressed concern that there was insufficient funding for supporting project identification, prioritization, and development activities. Um, and so we clarified that these activities are incorporated into the water quality restoration formula grants as well as the water quality enhancement grants. So those for the non-regulatory clean water projects are really intended to support all aspects of the uh, project life cycle. To the next uh, sheet for those in the room um, and to the next slide. Theme number five is related to uh, operation and maintenance funding for non-regulatory clean water projects uh, funded through the formula grants that will be administered by clean water service providers. There was an acknowledgement that we anticipate uh, operation and maintenance costs to increase over time as more projects are implemented, which we acknowledge and agree with, and we'll be working to better uh, analyze that trend over time as we have better data available. And in addition, there was a request for a breakdown of how we estimated, uh, calculated the funds that would be needed in state fiscal year 2023. So in state fiscal year 2023, it's the first year that operation and maintenance activities will be taking place that are state funded. Uh, and we anticipate that to amount to a level of effort of, of about a third of an FTE or full-time equivalent, which we estimate to be approximately $30,000 per basin where there are clean water service providers. So $30,000 per basin over seven basins comes out to the $210,000 in the draft budget. And in the first year, um, most of those operation and maintenance activities will involve initial inspection and verification of clean water projects and getting their operation and maintenance programs up and running. <clears throat> okay, on to the next theme, theme number six, um, Basin Water Quality Council uh, participation and basin planning participation, education and outreach. So this comment, uh, we had a number of comments recommending an increase in the uh, funding available for this line item acknowledging that there are some members of Basin Water Quality Councils. Those are the councils that will be advising the clean water service providers on and overseeing the decision making process of which projects are funded by local for local partners. Um, and we acknowledge that there's a gap in providing compensation for all council members to participate in those councils. Uh, so currently, if you're a basin planning statutory partner, including conservation districts, regional planning commissions, and watershed organizations, you have access to compensation through the basin planning grants. Uh, however, the two municipal representatives and the one land conservation representative on the council did not have access to compensation. And we estimate, so that's three members per each of the seven basins where there are FISPs and FWIPs, Basin Water Quality Council active. Um, so we estimate that to be approximately $2,000 per member per year, uh, which ends up being approximately $50,000 per year increase from what we had originally budgeted. So we proposed to increase uh, line item 1.3 by $50,000, um, and that $50,000 would come from uh, the Municipal Stormwater Implementation Grants in line 2.23. So that's the sixth theme, and on to the seventh theme, 
Um, as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, comments recommended increasing line 1.41, the water quality enhancement grants from $3 million to $5 million um, and having it be funded fully out of the clean water fund. Comments disagreed with the approach we had previously proposed uh, where Vermont Housing Conservation Board land and water quality projects, land conservation and water quality projects line items funded at $2 million from the capital bill would contribute to the statutory $5 million target or ceiling for that funding program. So we listened to those comments and we uh, proposed to revise the budget, increasing the water quality enhancement for statewide clean water non-regulatory projects uh, from $3 million to $5 million. And we funded that increase uh, from the Municipal Stormwater Implementation Grants line item, which is in a medium budget tier and also has access to federal funds through ARPA and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. And acknowledging that the Municipal Stormwater Implementation Grants are a medium budget priority and the Developed Lands Implementation Grants, which supports three acre general permit compliance for private parties, uh, is a low budget priority. We offset part of that reduction to the municipal line item by half a million dollars by shifting half a million from uh, line 3.1 to line 2.23, which I will show you an overview of the budget sheet after I get through this so you can visualize all these shifts. Um, so that is the proposal um, for the enhancement grant, theme number seven. Uh, theme number eight out of 12, so we're getting close. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Um, the enhancement, uh, so there was a, oh, excuse me, sorry, misspoke. Uh, so theme number eight was related to enforcement to address agricultural sources of water quality pollution. Uh, comments expressed support for the focus of agricultural efforts and urged an increase in enforcement of regulation. Uh, so I wanted to, we wanted to acknowledge that enforcement is beyond the scope of this budget. However, we acknowledge that uh, funding technical assistance to support compliance is a high priority in this budget. And also that Agency of Agriculture's program support line 1.61 includes funds to support Agency of Agriculture staff conducting farm inspections and technical assistance. So that's theme number eight. And theme number nine is Rather than a theme from public comment, it is a point of budget clarification that we wanted to run by the Clean Water Board uh, related to line 2.23 for municipal stormwater implementation grants. Uh, we had previously presented this line item as only supporting three acre municipal sites and the municipal separate storm sewer system or MS4 permit requirements. And since then we have learned uh, through our partner implementing the Municipal Road Grant and Aid Program. Uh, we've been providing funding to municipalities through Northwest Regional Planning Commission to make equipment funding available to municipalities to help them implement the Municipal Road General Permit Standard. And we learned that there's sufficient demand to uh, request an additional year of funding uh, so that we can complete the statewide rotation for this, this equipment program and give all municipalities a final opportunity to enroll in that program. So we're asking the board if uh, they would approve a revised line item description for the municipal stormwater implementation grant to also allow some of that funding to contribute toward the municipal road equipment funds. And the last I heard the additional demand was in the ballpark of $300,000 and we're working to refine that and we'll do our best to use leftover funds to support that need. So uh, we do not anticipate that that would exceed $300,000 from the total line item. And then number 10 here is related to innovation or alternative technologies or practices to improve water quality, line 2.4. Uh, this line, uh, there were a number of comments that came in that recommended investment in innovative techniques, technologies to address water pollution. Um, and this line is populated as, as explained in the line item description on an as needed basis, acknowledging that there's a number of innovation uh, investments that are currently underway. Uh, so we propose not funding this uh, line item in state fiscal year 2023 
and allowing the Vermont Bosphorus Innovation Challenge that is currently ongoing with prior year funds to wrap up um, and revisit the funding for this line item in state fiscal year 2024. And I also wanted to acknowledge that uh, innovation is not just isolated to this line item. Uh, we are using a number of other funding initiatives to support innovative efforts, um, spanning all the way from developing new ways to identify and prioritize projects to innovative uses of equipment in agricultural fields. Um, so there's a number of different ways that innovation has been woven throughout our funding initiatives and is not necessarily isolated to a single um, innovation initiative. Although we would revisit this in state fiscal year 2024 and see what demand is is there and what kind of program we could develop to support that. And this slide, um, I'm on to page eight for folks in the room, um, is related to comments that we received on the Lakes in Crisis Fund, so line 4.1. Um, and we did focus our comment summary and responses on items that are within the scope of the clean water budget. Uh, so first, there was a recommendation to increase the Lakes in Crisis Fund line item, line 4.1. Um, and some recommended specifically to increase it to from $50,000 to $100,000. Uh, no change is proposed to line 4.1 in this state fiscal year 2023 budget uh, for a handful of reasons. Uh, the fund is intended for supporting the initial response to the Lake and Crisis designation. And so this funding has been extended for several years. Um, the fund, the Lake and Crisis Fund specifically requires in statute a 35% match. And there are other sources of funding available uh, to support projects in the Lake Carmi watershed with lower or no match requirements. Uh, and third, projects reducing phosphorus in the Lake Carmi watershed are eligible through the formula grants as well as Agency of Agriculture's uh, water quality grants to partners and farmers line item. Um, and the Missisquoi Tactical Basin Plan, which includes the Lake Carmi watershed, as well as the Lake Carmi Crisis Response Plan, identify the Lake Carmi watershed as a priority area for investment. So that's related to high level funding uh, for lakes in crisis. And then there were a few specific requests related to continuation of the high frequency monitoring that has been in place for a couple of field seasons to monitor how the aerator system is working in the in Lake Carmi and uh, so we're pleased to report that we have been able to obligate funds to extend that monitoring for an additional field season in 2022 to continue to um, monitor its effectiveness and perhaps inform optimizations. And the Lakes and Ponds program continues to also monitor Lake Carmi and tributaries to track changes in phosphorus concentrations and other parameters. Uh, the next specific recommendation is related to Franklin Watershed Committee, which is the watershed organization um, active in the Lake Carmi watershed on capacity. Uh, so there was a request to increase funding to the Franklin Watershed Committee to expand its coordinator position to full time. Um, and we wanted to share that we are planning to offer organizational capacity development funding in the current state fiscal year, as well as in state fiscal year 2023. Uh, related to this budget and that these funds could be uh, used to support capacity building of watershed organizations. And then finally, um, the Lake Carmi Aerator extended maintenance contract. Uh, there have been some challenges with the operation and maintenance of the Lake Carmi Aerator and DEC recognizes the importance of successful long term operation and maintenance of the system. Um, and $10,000 a year have been dedicated to cover half of the electricity costs, uh, as well as uh, an extension of the Everblue Lakes contract by two years to continue to allow that organization to support operation and maintenance activities and to um, provide technical assistance and training to Franklin Town to get them prepared to assume some level of operation and maintenance as well. Um, and the EC plans to reconsider or consider funding um, an annual maintenance contract beyond the 2022 aeration season. We will be following up on that recommendation. And then the final theme uh, is related to line 4.4 and 4.5 for the state match to the Clean Water State Revolving Fund or CWSRS uh, federal grant and the municipal pollution control grants. 
Uh, comments expressed support for investments to eliminate combined sewer overflows uh, and to improve on private on-site wastewater systems such as septic systems and to assist municipal wastewater treatment systems in uh, emerging contaminants such as PFAS. So no change has been proposed to these line items, lines 4.4 and 4.5, uh, due to significant uh, federal funds that are being leveraged in this space. And we provided a little bit more detail here uh, that there are significant ARPA funds available that are planned to continue to address combined sewer overflows and on-site wastewater. Uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act also contains 100% subsidy funding to help support municipal drinking water systems and uh, municipal wastewater systems in addressing PFAS. So a lot going on um, in the clean water infrastructure space beyond the scope of this clean water budget. So trying to be thoughtful in how to best um, leverage these dollars to fill gaps. So that concludes my overview of the public comment theme and responses. And I'm showing a screenshot here as well that's also on page five of the updated budget overview document that highlights in yellow, and apologies if it's a little bit small, of uh, the cells that have changed as a result of public comment. Uh, so you can see here, just to summarize quickly, line 1.3, basin planning increased by $50,000. Um, the enhancement grant program for statewide non-regulatory clean water projects, oops, went too far, there we go, um, increased from $3 million to $5 million. The municipal three acre and uh, general permit and MS4 line item was decreased by 2 million, two, 2 million, yeah, just about $2 million um, to accommodate the enhancement grant program. And then we increased that by half a million dollars from the developed lands implementation grant line um, to offset that reduction slightly. And I should mention with regard to the municipal three acre general permit and MS4 permit, um, when you combine the clean water fund and the ARPA funds, it's an over $6 million investment, which still represents a net increase compared to prior year funds for the stormwater line item. So perhaps I will pause there. Um, and see if there's any questions. I see um, we want to go to the hand raise. Um, yes, uh, hi. Uh, so I lower my hand. My apologies, my computer does not do well with teams. Um, so I, I talk about this item every year, um, but I, I think we should be trying to find a way to drive additional innovation um, and find Vermont solutions to these problems. So I'm disappointed given especially the public comments that there's not some modest amount of funding going to the line item innovative or alternative technologies. I appreciate the work that's going on with Phosphorus. I appreciate the points that there are other things in other programs, but I think it's, for me anyway, I think it's important for this group to have a statement that um, we may have unique solutions in Vermont that someone else hasn't thought of yet, and we should be encouraging and stimulating. So, for what it's worth. Thank you, Bob. I ask a follow on question, Bob. Are you proposing a specific change? Like, are, are you offering an amendment to the budget or just simply noting a concern? I, I'm noting a concern, and if I saw some traction, I'd propose something, but uh, <laughs> okay. Right? But at the moment, I'm not. Thank you. Hi, hi. I just I would like to hear more from Bob about what that means. That I I'm kind of lacking the I guess I'm lacking the context or something to fully understand where you're coming from with that comment. It would be useful for me to have a little bit more from you on that. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, and appreciate it. I'm a late person, I'm not an engineer, um, but you know, we have a research university. Um, we have people that are involved in, in this area that are professionals in the state. And you know, just as we came up, uh, the phosphorus solutions have started to emerge. 
There may be other solutions that nobody's even thought of. So why aren't we using this money to, to accelerate some of that research, pilot some innovative ideas, and, and try to find, again, I'm being idealistic, I appreciate it. I'll call it Vermont Solutions to a problem, uh, and we have the scale where we can test drive some of these ideas. And they may not work, but at least we're, we're trying to do something you know, unique. Thanks for saying more about that. I, I think for maybe for context, if I could offer a little, Emily, in, in the past, probably three years ago now, uh, the Ag Agency and ANR um, had funding in that line item that we used to fund the Phosphorus Innovation Challenge. Um, and it was a little bit of a Shark Tank style approach. We received, I think, 30 proposals and ultimately um, carried three of them forward to full funding, which are still um, sort of being worked on and moved into being at scale, including a, a hub and spokes model for composting, some uh, advanced work being done by UVM and the Village of Essex Junction Wastewater Facility, um, and something looking at microfiltration. And, and they, they all have sort of different strengths and challenges, but it, it's that sort of work that otherwise I think has a hard time accessing um, specific line items in our budget that are really dedicated uh, to direct project implementation as opposed to sort of concept development or proof of concept development. Um, I appreciate your comment, Bob. I, I think it is an, an important piece. It's always there's a tension there between building things we know are going to work and looking for the, the what's next and we, what may do the job better. Um, and I think it's it's an important piece not to lose sight of. Secretary Moore, may I add just a little bit to that too? I think one thing during this shift from our prior suite of funding programs into this new set of funding programs that are required under Act 76 of 2019, a lot of our focus has been on building a Organiza organizational capacity support funds that will help with our partners during that transition period. And so I'm wondering if um, there is an opportunity to kind of reconvene on this subject um, as we begin to plan for the state fiscal year 24 budget, um, working to find some stability for our, our partners and then and then identifying where there's opportunities to further invest in this innovative space uh, and i also know that there's a number of research and development activities that are ongoing with lake champlain basin program funding and as well as with our um, partners in the academic world and wondering if it would make sense to pull those partners together to try to identify um, Kind of catalog everything that's happening in this space to better communicate about it and see if there's um, gaps that would benefit from a strategic investment here. Really like that suggestion. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we kind of naturally flowed into the discussion of the possible changes. Um, one thing I would like to raise before just opening it up again to the members of the board to continue discussion is line 2.23, the amendment to include um, equipment in the in the um, eligible uses for that money. I have no issues with that provided it is the clean water fund portion of that activity. That line has ARPA funds as well, and purchasing of depreciable equipment with ARPA funds is um, somewhat more complicated. I wouldn't rule it out, but I think we should be somewhat cautious um, when applying ARPA funds to uh, depreciable equipment because of the treasury rules in that regard. So I think there's 1.5 million on that line uh, that is state funds and it would be I think easier for everyone involved if the equipment investments were focused on the state fund portion of that line item. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That's a great point. Okay. 
<laughs> comment. Um, I just, you know, I, I appreciate and read the public comments and concerns around the water quality enhancement grants. And I think, you know, the solution we've arrived at for this year is, is fine and frankly makes sense given the, the sort of resources available to support other important areas of work. I do feel like I would be remiss in saying I, I, I don't necessarily, not willing to concede maybe that our interpretation of that funding line was wrong and have concerns about out years um, that we start to set an expectation that the, the only flavor of money that belongs in that enhancement line uh, is clean water fund money. I think for the next three to maybe even five years, it's not an issue um, that between ARPA and the IIJA programs, we will have resource, unprecedented resources to do work related to clean water. Um, but at least just want to put a pin in it, highlighting my concern that that we, it's not that we not assume any of these lines are sort of fixed at the level they're currently at. That this is a reflection of the resources available to us, and I know we'll benefit from your further analysis um, of the the total needs in this space and having sort of more robust conversations on down the line. Yeah, I appreciate that comment as well, Secretary, because. Um, under other circumstances, I might push back more against the reduction in the three acre line item, but I am aware of all the other funding sources outside of the clean water fund that are that are supporting that activity in multiple agencies right now. So I think it is situational. I would say I don't necessarily agree that the I that our interpretation was wrong either. Um, I wouldn't define it as narrowly as the comments did. Um, so I think that's an important uh, caveat, even if we do shift the funds in the in the manner that's proposed. All right. Um, any other members of the board want to raise either general issues or specific line items on this um, proposed? FY23 budget. All right, hearing none. Um, all right, before proposing a motion to adopt, I would ask. Are there any motions to amend any elements of this budget recommendation? All right. Hearing none, I would ask for a motion to adopt the fiscal year 2023 clean water budget recommendation as so it is presented on public uh, comment first. Oh, wait, sorry. Did I jump the agenda? You jumped number four on the agenda. Oh, apologies. <laughs> all right, yeah, thank you, Secretary Moore. Um, all right, Emily, um, can we move into public comment now then? Sorry about yeah. that. No problem. We have some folks who signed up ahead of time to comment. First on the list is Robert Evans, but he uh, let me know if he's unable to make it today. Uh, so next on the list is Alice Peel from Wakefield Planning Commission. I'll just do a quick scan. Alice, if you are here. Um, not seeing. Alice, if you are here and you'd like to unmute and, and voice your comments, feel free to do so. It appears that um, Alice is not here. So next on the list is Peter Benevento with Lake Carmi Campers Association. I believe I saw Peter here. Pete. Yes, I am here. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, then thank you. Thank you all for allowing me to comment. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm with the Lake Carmi Campers Association as well as the Franklin Watershed Committee. And we did provide some lengthy um, comments and proposals to the budget. Um, as well as, I believe, a photo journal of what we're still experiencing at Lake Parmine. 
And we certainly appreciate everything that's been done and all of the assets that have been devoted to Lake Carmine. But we have a long way to go um, in order to make this this lake uh, what we're what we're trying to to accomplish. Um, and that's that's clean water. And um, I know the lake in crisis funding is is level. Uh, we, if I understand, stood it correctly from your proposals that it's still at fifty thousand um, dollars. I know the recommendation is that there are other other grants available, but there are other organizations also that compete for those grants. So obviously, if if there's any way to increase that line item and funding for the for the lake in crisis. Um, you know, we would we would definitely be in favor of that. Um, we anticipate that there is going to be increased or more expenses to be had in terms of the maintenance of the aeration system. Um, there's also research ongoing at the lake that we would like to see continued in, in terms of the, 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 the platform that has been established by UVM to take parameters of the lake uh, that are associated with the aeration system. Um, there, there are many things involved, as, as you know, I, I could go through a laundry list of things that we need. Um, and again, we appreciate everything that, that has been done, but we, we, would, we would appreciate whatever the Clean Water Board can do to, to send more funding our way. I believe we are still the only lake in crisis in the, in the state, um, and the funding is, is going to have a direct bearing on, on, on the health of the residents as well as the economic and environmental impacts in the area. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Uh, next on the list is somebody named Maria with no last name, and I don't believe they are here. So that might have been someone who planned to be here. Uh, so I'll move on to the next person, uh, Bruce McGurk with Lake Carmine Campers Association. Bruce on the call. Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. And I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. No, you did You did fine. Uh, I wanted to, I, I'm a certified professional hydrologist and uh, spend time on the lake. Uh, it's been discouraging over 30 years to watch uh, the decline in lake quality and, and the fact that now we have multiple days in a row where the lake is, cannot be entered safely by, by swimmers or even a dog. So I certainly support uh, uh, Pete Benevento's comments uh it's a long process uh to get this lake turned around and we do need continued funding i am delighted at the idea of some arpa uh, and the jobs act money coming our way but i'm also frightened how uncertain that is but thank you for the support that you have given us we would be nowhere without it uh, we've been monitoring uh personally uh pete's out there on the creeks all the time but uh, it's a big job for a, a handful of us. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bruce. Um, just doing a quick scan of the attendees. There's someone with Maria on the screen now. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> uh, Maria, hi, did, did you sign up to comment? I did, yes. Thank you very much. Um, so I am going to echo what um, Pete just said. I, um, my husband's family has been on Lake Carmi for four generations, um, and we, you know, it, it's been discouraging um, to see what's happening, but also encouraging in terms of the support that we've had. And so, you know, would ask that we continue to focus, um, you know, and, and provide funds so that we can see, um, you know, the continued success and, and make Lake Carmi a success story, you know, in the lake. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay, I see next on the list is Albert Perry with the Lake Carmi Campers Association. Oh, and you just need to unmute yourself, uh, Albert. Uh, if you go to the top of Teams, there should be a little microphone symbol you can touch to unmute. Uh, I can't unmute for anyone due to privacy. Um, 
with constraints. Oh, yeah. So that makes sense. You catch everybody whispering in the back. Right. Just in case you catch someone off guard. Yep. I'm sorry, Albert. I wish I. Uh, so, Albert, if you go to the top of your team's um, toolbar, oh. you will even. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh. Maybe he'll try rejoining us and then he will be unmuted. I suppose in the meantime, I believe we got to everybody on the list. If there's anyone who I may have missed who's interested in commenting, feel free to raise your hand or if you have difficulty doing that, just to unmute yourself and let us know. And then, um, oh, I see Jared Carpenter with Lake Champlain Committee is raising his hand. Go ahead, Jared. Good afternoon, all, uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Secretary. Sorry for not officially signing up, but just very quickly, I did want to thank the board for increasing the enhancement grants to $5 million. As you know, this is something that um, our organizations very much pushed for, and it's very much appreciated, but it sounds like the uh, the discussion will continue in the future, so to speak. Right, so, I'm mute. so thank you again. It sounds like we have Albert back, so I will uh, I'm muted. I will uh, I will step aside and, um, and, and, and let him take over his spot. Thank you again. Thank you, Jared. Welcome back, Albert. Uh, oh. We can hear you now. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much. I apologize for the delay. Uh, I, my comment is more in the form of a question. Uh, the, the question is, what, how do the people of Vermont uh, follow the progress and determine uh, for themselves and for uh, dealing with their uh, representatives and, and you all. Uh, when, when the lake is, uh, Lake Carmi is identified by the legislature as a lake in crisis, uh, which has its obvious uh, implications, and and that and and which has funding applied, but at the same time, the measure of of success or the measure of the condition of the lake, called TMDL, is not making very much progress, and the obvious consequences of having the lake's problems are not only continuing, but sometimes getting worse from year to year. Uh, and as an individual, I can ascribe the getting worse to a number of different possibilities, uh, one of which is climate change. And I don't think we can do much about that but the, as a citizen, I'm looking for confidence from state government that the state government intends and acts to correct the conditions of this lake. My, my bottom line feeling is that the lake is a public asset a public resource, and it's it's an entrusted that resource is entrusted to the state of Vermont. And you all, the Clean Water Board, uh, as well as the DEC and and others, I believe have the responsibility to uh, discharge that public trust in a positive way and use the resources available uh, to get the work done. And I just ask you to consider, are you doing as much as you can with the resources that are available to fulfill that public trust? Thank you. Thank you, Albert. So uh, I will drop into the chat uh, the, the link to the clean water performance report 
Uh, we publish this report each year and it has a wealth of information. I don't know that it will go all the way to answering your, your questions, um, but I think it will be useful. And I, I'm sure staff here would be happy to, to talk with you further. We will be producing the, the report covering calendar year 21 or fiscal year 21 uh, by January 15th. So there, there's a brand spanking new version in the offing, um, but we'll put the link in the chat. And as I say, please, please don't hesitate to be in touch if you would like to discuss further after you had a chance to review, assuming you haven't already taken a look at that report. And Thanks, I'll, also, Secretary. I'll also just highlight that uh, we're going to be publishing a dashboard that specifically focuses on, um, allows you to filter down to progress being made in the Lake Carmi watershed this year. Um, so complementary to the performance report that Secretary Moore just highlighted, we have an online clean water interactive dashboard and the ability to filter down to specific regions of the state and there will be a Lake Carmi feature there. Uh, continuing on the Lake Carmi progress report we published in July of 2020. Um, so we'll be sure to make sure that you get access to that and if uh, you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I believe we have um, gone through the list of everyone who has signed up to comment. If I missed anyone, please feel free to raise your hand or unmute and let us know. Uh, or if there's anyone else who did not sign up but wishes to comment, please feel free to raise your hand or if you have trouble doing that to unmute and let us know. Uh, I see Ken has, Ken Henderson has his hand raised. Um, thank you, Ken. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to comment. I was very encouraged to um, look at the revisions in the board. Um, I didn't introduce myself. I'm the uh, representative for a small nonprofit um, water protection uh, local watershed group. Uh, doing work on the ground and having worked very overtime with fundraising to keep our organization in operation in the last two years, unable to uh, be able to provide our normal outreach um, in the public as we have done in the past due to COVID safety guidelines. Um, really happy to see that there is recognition of increasing our capacity and especially in the organization of the Basin Water Quality Councils. Uh, this will be a new function that uh, many of us will be taking on. Uh, it'll be an additional function to what we've been providing in the past. And again, I'm thankful for this recognition and the fact that uh, you provided extra funding for that. So thanks for that. Thank you, Ken. I am not seeing anybody else with a hand raised or have not heard anybody else requesting to comment. Um, so if that's the case, I believe that concludes the public comment portion of the agenda. All right. Thank you, Emily. Um, so I'd first like to ask the members of the board um are there any more members of the board which would like to propose a motion to change any elements of the fy23 clean water budget as recommended all right Hearing none, I would like to ask for a motion to adopt the fiscal year 23 clean water budget as recommended by Agency of Natural Resources. So moved. We have a second. I'll second. All right. All right. Um, apologies. I don't believe this board has a secretary. Emily, could you assist me with a roll call? Sure. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, would you like me to just run through each member? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, uh, Deputy Secretary Brooks. Yes. Allison Conan. Yeah. Bob Flynn. Aye. Secretary Flynn. Yes. Jim Giffen. Yes. Uh, Secretary Moore. Yes. Secretary Tebbit. Yes. And Chad Tyler, I believe, is not able to join us today. Oh, and uh, of course, Mr. Chairman Barnum. <laughs> uh, yes. That's for last. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you, Emily. Um, so I lost the exact count off the top of my head, but we have one absent all in all present or in favor. Um, so I believe that vote passes. Um, so the Clean Water Board has formally adopted the fiscal year 23 budget as recommended uh, to be transmitted to Governor Scott for inclusion in the um, 2023 budget presentation. Um, next item is other business. Um, so there's two things on this list. First, we have the Clean Water Initiative uh, 2021 performance report. Secretary Moore was discussing that earlier. Um, Secretary, are there any other um, details on that that we can provide right now? I would actually ask Emily okay. to fill in the blanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so the draft budget is currently under Agency of Natural Resources and Department of Environmental Conservation Leadership Review. It has completed the interagency staff level review um, and then next we will be passing it along to Agency of Administration for final review later this month. Uh, the report is due to the legislature January 15th and we'll be sure to provide a copy to the Clean Water Board and post it on the Clean Water Board webpage. And as I mentioned earlier, Today, there's also um, going to be an, a companion online dashboard and Project Explorer that will allow interested parties to log on and search for individual clean water projects in their region or filter it by different uh, parameters and also the ability to filter the summarized data sets uh, by different parameters like watershed, for example. Uh, so we'll be sure to make those resources available to folks and we're planning to uh, provide some communications on the rollout of the report and the dashboard in late January, early February. So please stay tuned and we'll be keeping our clean water stakeholder newsletter uh, subscribers up to date on on those communications. All right, thank you, Emily. Um, any questions from the board on that topic? All right. Um, the other item on other business is the status of the Clean Water Fund program on it. Um, so that activity has been been by agency of administration. The an RFP was issued um, quite some time ago. Uh, as you all know, I think we got no response from that. It was then reissued um, more recently, left open and reopened. Um, however, we received no responses uh, to that RFP. At this point, I believe um, that uh, we, or myself maybe, need to go back to the legislature and, and recommend uh, either adoption of the criteria. Um, I think that it's very difficult to ascertain exactly why no one is responding, but anecdotally we've received feedback that the scope is just too large. There's and there's um, difficulty in responding to the to the RFP. Um, we did consider breaking it up and posting it separately, but the RFP we posted the second time does clearly state you can respond to all or part of this RFP. Um, so agencies already had the entities already had the option of responding only to portions of the RFP if they did not want to respond to the entire RFP. Um, 
so unfortunately that uh, program audit is unable to move forward right now because of the lack of of response for from entities willing to take on that contract uh, mr giffen yes i would urge you to work with the legislative leadership the scope of the legislation was just impossible you know it was like you know from soup to nuts it was like in everything that they were expected to do so i guess i would urge you to figure out what are the key components with legislative leadership that they want to know and then get a revised scope thank you um i i couldn't agree more to be honest um with the history on this particular um, audit, since it is legislatively driven and since it would require, um, uh, since it would require adjustment in the, at the statutory level, I'm wondering if the board should make a formal motion to work with the legislature on adopting those program scopes, or if we want to leave it informal at the moment and just still consider next steps. When is our next meeting? We typically reconvene in February to check in on how revenue is are tracking and if there are any changes to the budget through the governor's recommendation. That makes me think that subject. I agree. I, I think maybe having a, a prepared like a draft statement that we could circulate to the board um, Doug, if you're willing to entertain that, I'd be happy to work with you on it. I think, Jim, reflecting the comments you provided, to maybe break it up into several things and then be able to have that as a basis for a conversation with the legislature about whether all of these things are essential, um, having had three bites of this apple and no no takers. So, or offered three bites of this apple. <laughs> Yeah, I would support that, and I, I think it's also good for us to um, see each other more willing in person, but at least this way, you know, as the session has begun to get a sense of the lay of the land and if anything has emerged. So, Emily or Secretary Farnham, when is the new revenue forecast come out? Um between I think somewhere around January 17th I forget the exact day off the top of my head but in the second or third week of January is um, usually when we can get the numbers out of the um, state economist so Emily do we usually meet early in February to review the revenue and the expenses at that point I usually it's within the first couple of weeks of February that we reconvene. Would that timing work well uh, for for our next board meeting, given the revenue availability? OK. Yes, I, I can follow up on that. Thank you. All right, so yeah, actually that's a good reminder because I didn't have scheduling our next meeting as a, an action item on here. So it's good that we're throwing that up there for the board members. So um, we will work on scheduling that next meeting in Febu early February. Um, revenue will certainly be a topic and Secretary Moore and I can also work together on um, getting a, uh, a, a proposal on how the how the board should engage with the legislature on the scope amendment for the program audit. And I think that will give us enough time to consider the issue and um, and clearly state, you know, what what we think the most prudent course of action is. Um, going forward. All right. Um, if there's nothing else on that topic, I would open the floor to any other business. The 
board would like to raise at this point? I don't see an action item there, but usually I do that. All right. So our next meeting um, will be scheduled for early February. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? No move. <laughs> All right, second. I saw a couple seconds there. <laughs> um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Thank you. That can um, ooh, that completes the December 14th meeting of the Clean Water Board. Um, thank you all for coming and have a happy holidays. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.